Welcome back to our channel, YouTube. My name is Kristen Forgione. I'm the founder, Cruella. <laughs> Cruella. Cruella. <laughs> Welcome back to our channel, YouTube. My name is Kristen Forgione. I'm the founder, creative director, and principal designer of The Lifestyle Co. And I'm here with Kylie Ray Seberg, our senior design director. And we were just talking about how many questions we get from you guys asking us how to design kids' rooms. So what are we gonna do today? We're gonna show you how to design your kids' faces like a designer. I'd say the first thing you should start with when you're trying to design a kid's room like a designer is really thinking about the future. Kids change so fast, like faster than almost anything. I'd say puppies change faster, but <laughs> other than that, they are, they're changing all the time and the things that they're into change often as well. So you wanna start really 40,000 feet super high up so that you can decide what you wanna include in the space that has a long lifespan, right? So I'd say we always, think more forward when it comes to beds, big furniture pieces, right? Beds, desks. Don't buy a desk that's for a toddler if you have a one-year-old, unfortunately. It, you want them to grow into it rather than only have a few months with any of your high ticket pieces. I'd say same thing with like wall treatments, um, anything that will take a little bit to get you out of it, you really wanna think forward. So start with a very, very clear forward plan and think about how long you want this room to last and then what pieces are going to cost you the most and make sure that those have the most longevity. No particular order. Number two, we'd say get to know their personality. Obviously, if they're your child, you know what they like and their dislikes, um, but make sure that you let their personalities show. So we always focus on if they like sports, we have little touches in the styling in there, favorite colors, characters. Um, we don't do a bunch of theme rooms, but you will see small touches that we kind of make able for them to be able to grow into while lasting them for years to come. So if they like sports, put some baseballs on the shelves. Um, if they like... What, whatever. And I would even say, I would even say ask, if your kids are old enough, ask them. It's kind of one of those like double-edged swords where we've had clients before where we're like, oh, ask you know, Katie, what she thinks about her room. And mom's like, no, we are not asking Katie what she thinks about her room. That's gonna be a nightmare, la di da But truly, when we get involved, we love to work with kids. We wanna hear them and we want them to get excited about what we're designing, right? So for you at home, if you're designing a space for your kids, don't be afraid to involve them. Instead of saying, what do you want in your room? Say, here's what I'm thinking for your room. Do you prefer green or blue, right? Give them options, like not a huge open-ended discussion, but just some options so that they can have some input, input and then when they see that come through in their space, they're gonna be so much more excited and it's gonna feel really collaborative. Kids are always looking for visual clues as they're figuring out the world and the space that they live in is no exception. So you wanna create zones. We always, always mm -hmm. have a play zone. So open floor space where they can play, use their imaginations, cosplay, however, however they do that. Um, we always have a, like a lounging TV zone, uh, an electronic or device zone. If you want to, you know, have a, a space where they know when they're in this space, they can use an iPad or they're reading or whatever. A reading nook, so could be the same zone, but books close by. Um, what other zones? Homework. Homework. Um, which. I feel like some parents always say they end up at the kitchen table still, but yeah. nice to have that designated area where all their things can go. Um, also helps you to have storage for them there and as well. Display homework yes. and art and all that. In my home, I have a 100% wall. So whenever my girls come home with anything that they've gotten 100% on, they grab a piece of washi tape and they put it on 100% wall. So at the end of the year, the wall is like overflowing and it's, it's so fun um, and it's something that I really like. So that homework station or zone could be a place that you put that. If your kids are younger, a place to display art, um, a craft zone, like this table behind us is huge. You could have the whole neighborhood over, um, cousins, whatever, and craft. Obviously prepare yourself. We got these tables for pretty cost effective because we 100% know that they're gonna get messed up. So get okay with it. Don't restrict your kids in that way. This is also an outdoor rug, it's full well knowing that there's gonna be paint and slime and all the things all over it. So while we wanna teach them how to clean up after themselves, we also wanna make sure that they feel like they can live and be about within the zones that we create. Number four, we want them to feel represented in the space. So it's always important to use their personal belongings such as clothes, toys, 
and so that they feel showcased when they walk into their rooms and see things on their shelves. So some things that we do when we're in a house where a kid already lives there, we raid their closets. So you'll <laughs> see where we put little cowboy boots, um, hats, yeah, small jackets. Everything's cuter and smaller. <laughs> totally. I feel like a lot of our clients have a great shoe selection yeah. <laughs> at such a young age. So we always want to make sure we show those off. And then they walk in their room, they feel represented. Um, and it also helps fill shelves because Filling shelves and kids spaces. kids spaces is very challenging. One of the biggest mistakes I'll say that we see in consumer designed play spaces or kids spaces is forgetting completely about the actual stuff that they have, right? So gosh, my girls have a dollhouse, like a Barbie jet, uh, like, you know, they just have stuff, boys too. Like all, all that stuff is big. And so it doesn't often fit in like that cute little chest that you got that you love from an aesthetic standpoint, but you really need more storage. So if you are planning far enough in advance, we really recommend built-in cabinetry or drawers. Kids are great with drawers. Don't expect them to be organized. Just make them big enough so that the kids can grab their stuff, open the drawer, set it in and close the drawer. It makes cleanup time a lot simpler, a lot easier. If your kids can read, I also recommend labeling what you want in the drawers, right? Like micro machines go here. Are micro machines still a thing? I don't know. What's a micro machine? Oh my god. <laughs> Honey. What is that? If you were born in the 80s, a which labeler? you weren't, a labeler? No, it's like a little car. <laughs> Ugh, I, you're having a girl, and I'm still gonna get her some micro machines because you can play with anything you want. Um, but Whatever the big, the, what's the other car one? Not micro machines, help Mac me, somebody help me. Uh, Hot, Hot, wheels. Wheels. Hot wheels, Hot, Hot wheels. wheels, thank you. Nick has boys. <laughs> Hot wheels, uh, we're girl moms. Well, Kylie's about to be a girl mom. Yes. I'm a girl mom. Yes. Um, and anyway, and it doesn't matter anyway, you can play with whatever you want, YouTube. So don't think that we're saying that girls only have to play with girl toys and boys only have to play with boy toys because that is not the case. But my point is, whatever the heck the toy is, it's probably big and you need a place to put it. So if your kids can read, you can label the drawers or the shelves or whatever. I've also seen um, on Pinterest before, um, actually icons. Actually, I think I saw this in a Montessori classroom at one point. So like, if you want all the blocks to go in this drawer, just do a picture of the blocks. Or so, so you, they can start to get kind of that recognition between the toy and where you want it. Also closets. Again, if you have the opportunity to build ahead of time, every single time we're in plan review, there is no closet in a play space. And we always wanna make sure that there's a closet. It will make your life so much easier. Yes, it might add three square feet, but it's worth it. In kids spaces, bedding is important. We always try and keep it cost effective in there, but that doesn't mean that we skimp out on the layers. So in any space, layers are super important. Textiles, pillows, throws, window treatments, because it adds so much to a room. Um, so make sure that that's still important to you and it doesn't have to be expensive, but the littlest amounts do make a big difference. So something when a child is a baby, you wrap them in the softest materials and we wanna continue that through their rest of their lives. Paint is going to be your friend in kids' spaces. In this room that we're in, you're actually not seeing any focal point paint because we were able to do wall treatments that were even better, we'll call it, in the design world than paint. Paint's great, don't get me wrong, but if we can wallpaper the whole room, throw some white oak tongue and groove on two walls, like we're here for it. So, so we did that in this space, but um, paint in a kid's space is going to be cost effective, relatively easy to change. Um, you know, you feel like you got your money's worth, if you, if you will, in a couple years use. So anything that's allowed, or I should say not allowed in the rest of your home, not allowed, you know, use that like, with a grain of salt, but something you wouldn't do normally in the rest of your home, you can totally do in a kid's space. So take a risk. Like I feel like kids spaces and powder rooms, take a risk. You have full permission to, if you can dream it and you can design it, try to execute it. Paint ceilings, we do a lot of color blocking. Um, so part of the wall, from like a, a midpoint down is a focal color, part of the wall from a midpoint up, just the ceiling, stripes, um, different walls painted different colors. Obviously you don't want like something that is polarizing that they can't sleep. <laughs> yeah, that they can't sleep in, like keep it to like two colors maximum um, and obviously colors that complement. But let paint be your friend. You can paint doors. We do a lot of accent trim. So where you have a baseboard or your doors are cased, you could paint those in a focal color. Um, so much you can do with paint. So don't forget about paint. It's your friend, it's cost effective and it's easy to change.
Lighting is another huge important factor when designing kids spaces. You can take a room from feeling a little more adult to super playful with the change of one fixture. So this room that we're in, we actually chose these really oversized funnel pendants, which again, just adds so much to this space, kind of give it like a schoolhouse vibe, so um, and just add to what they're doing in this space and gives it a little more personality. Um, adding lighting in their bedroom is also another really important thing that can take the space from more adult to a little more playful. You never want to forget about bedside table lamps. Um, they always need accent lighting and you can pick a, a shape that again, you wouldn't do in like another space in your room or in your home and you can put it in there and it would get a little more of a showcase in there. Um, also wall focal lighting is a huge one. You'll notice in a lot of our spaces, we always make sure we have sconces on the walls. Just again, adds another layer of accent lighting and something that's easy, pretty easy to switch out as you can pick a cost-effective fixture and swap that out in a few years and get a completely different look. And when we're designing lighting, or I should say when we're designing kids spaces, I feel like we either start with the lighting, like this came first. Yes. The four of these were like blank walls, dirt on the ground. And we were like, we gotta put these in here. Mm -hmm. So we either typically start with the lighting design or end with the lighting design and in, in kind of a controlled way, wait until the design comes forward a little bit and then select if we're gonna, gonna do it at the end. So um, there's really no wrong way to do it, but it helps me to know that I'm like saving that moment if I am and I haven't identified what the lighting looks like in that space for a kid, um, that I want like the perfect fixture that then can be more modern or more traditional or more playful or whatever. I'd say the final step in really taking your design from consumer to designer looking is not forgetting about personalization everywhere you can and adding their name. I am a mom, I'm a huge believer in them seeing their name every single day, the first thing when they open their eyes and the last thing when they close their eyes other than me and their, you know, my husband and their dad and the people that love them, siblings, pets. Um, you wanna remind them often who they are and for them to be proud of who they are and their name or their namesake is one way to do that. So working their names in, does baby girl have her name in her nursery? She does. I'm gonna of course she does. <laughs> the last thing I put up. I figured it would be. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be so good. So there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Wood lettering is a, is a great way. Neon is super in. Um, and neon isn't actually neon anymore. It's just LED strip lighting. So there's tons of options there. Um, Etsy is a great place to find a plethora of options for kids personalization. I also love the idea of like a hand embroider or some sort of embroidery on um, a bed pillow or dare I say monogram. We're not big monogram people, but I feel like in the right use in a kid's space, it could, especially especially for a boy, I kind of feel like it could feel very like dad-like, like manly yeah. to have, you know, like, like how your dad is like his socks and like, you know, yeah. you know, I don't know. I think it could be really cute. So um, you'll probably see that in a forthcoming um, design of ours someday, but don't forget to personalize their spaces so that they are reminded and proud of who they are. So I can't think of anything else really that we do consistently. I feel like if you guys just stick to those tips, you're going to have incredible kids spaces. Anything you want to add? Um, I think we nailed it all and covered everything, but make sure you check out all of our kids spaces. We've designed a lot over the years. Yeah. Um, and I really can't pick a favorite one. I know, they're usually our favorite rooms, honestly, <laughs> in, in the entire design. So uh, make sure you talk to us and we will catch you on the next one, YouTube.